This is how to create an advanced looking pattern swatch with only a few steps. So creating patterns like this is way easier if we have the grid turned on. So let's go to view, go to show grid, then go to view again and click snap to grid. So now we are ready to draw our first shape. For this, go to the rectangle tool and draw a shape like this. Start in one of these crosshairs right here and draw a shape that is one square wide and four squares tall. Then disable the stroke and give it a fill color that you like. You can always change this color later. Then grab the selection tool, select the shape you just made, hold down the Alt key to duplicate this shape, create a duplication and move this duplication four squares to the right. Then select both these shapes, duplicate these shapes once again and move them like this. So we want one square of gap and we want the shapes to line up in between these shapes. Now grab the rectangle tool again, start from this corner right here and draw a rectangle that fills out this gap right here. This will connect all the shapes. So now if we go to the top of the screen, we can see that the height of this shape is 72 pixels. This means that one of these squares is 72 pixels by 72 pixels. This may be different in your grid if you have made some adjustments to the grid size. So remember whatever number you have, we are going to use this number later. Now pick the selection tool, select all shapes, go to the pathfinder menu right here. If it isn't open, you can go to window and find the pathfinder panel right here. So go down to the pathfinder panel and click this button right here that says unite. This will merge all the separate shapes into one shape. So now for a little bit more detail, we are going to round the corners of this shape. So now if you're using Illustrator CC, you can simply grab these corner handles right here to round the corners. If you're using CS6 like me, you can go to effects, go to stylize and go to round corners. Here we can click the preview button and select whatever radius we want. I will pick 15 pixels and click OK. So now we have a shape like this. And to get a pattern from this shape, we need it to repeat itself into infinity. So to do this, we simply select the shape, go to object, go to pattern, and then go to make. And here we obviously need to make some adjustments. So now remember the size of these squares right here. Mine was 72 pixels because we need the gap between the repeated shapes to be one square wide. This means that we need to move this shape three squares down and this shape one square to the left. To do this, click size tile to art, then go to edge spacing and type in 72 pixels. Click enter. And this will create a space of 72 pixels between the objects on the horizontal row. On the vertical row, we want the objects to move closer by 3 squares, which is 3 times 72 pixels. So go to vertical spacing and type in minus 72 times 3 and click OK. So now we have the correct spacing between the objects, but in this formation right here, we have one uninterrupted straight line right here and right here. And for this pattern right here, we want to interrupt every straight line to make the pattern look more seamless and advanced. So to interrupt these lines, we go to the tile type and select brick by row. And for brick offset, we choose a half. This means we now have no uninterrupted lines. So now simply click done. So we need to make some adjustments to the pattern, but first let's get rid of this shape right here. So first let's create a square so we can see the pattern. And I will start off by doing a background. So create a square and give it a color. Then go to the layers menu, duplicate this layer. Then go to the selection tool and with the upper layer selected, click on the pattern swatch you just made right here. So now we can do some adjustments to this pattern swatch. So while having the object with the pattern swatch applied selected, go to effect Go to Distort and Transform and select Transform. From here we can adjust the size and the angle of the pattern. So first of all, I want to scale the pattern down. For this, go to the scale sliders and for this video, I will scale it down to 30%. Do this at both sliders. And you can click Preview to see what's happening. And as you can see right now, I did not only scale the pattern down, I also scaled the entire object down. So to prevent this, simply uncheck this box right here that says transform objects. 
Now it's only scaling the pattern and not the object. And to make the pattern a little bit more interesting, we can adjust the angle. For this example, I will use 35 degrees. And we can click the preview again, just to see what we are doing. And this looks great, so click OK. And here we have our finished pattern. If you see small imperfections in your pattern like this, you can see that if I zoom into it, it will disappear. It's because it's only a bug inside Adobe Illustrator and it will not show when you export your project into PDF or other file types. Thank you for watching.